Experts will tell you that the best investment of your time is to enhance your earning ability. This means investing in activities or resources that improve your skills and capabilities in areas relevant to your work or desired career path. Many people struggle with organizing their lives, feeling overwhelmed by the constant demands and distractions. They find themselves dealing with unexpected emergencies, unmet expectations, and tasks taking longer than anticipated. In reality, our modern world offers countless opportunities and distractions, tempting us to pursue multiple endeavors simultaneously. To regain control, it's crucial to reflect on your true identity and aspirations. Consider your natural talents, interests, and passions. Imagine a scenario where financial constraints are removed. What would you choose to do with your time and energy? Reflecting on these questions can provide clarity and direction. At Stanford University, an exercise known as the 2010 exercise encourages creative thinking. Participants envision having substantial wealth but limited time due to a terminal illness. This exercise prompts individuals to prioritize their goals and make decisions aligned with their values and priorities. It's a common belief that humans only utilize a small fraction of their potential. Recent research suggests that this fraction is even smaller than previously thought, with most individuals utilizing only about 2% of their potential. Much of this potential remains untapped, buried beneath habits and routines that do not contribute to personal growth or fulfillment. Many people spend their limited mental capacity on trivial activities like socializing, consuming media, or engaging in idle chatter. However, the quality of your thinking profoundly influences your actions, and consequently, your results in life. Successful individuals focus on achieving tangible results, rather than merely going through the motions or wasting time on unproductive tasks. Unsuccessful people often squander their time on irrelevant activities, such as excessive socializing or procrastination. They fail to prioritize their tasks effectively and lack a sense of urgency in completing important projects. To transform your life and enhance your productivity, adopt a disciplined approach to work. Rather than succumbing to distractions or social pressures, prioritize your tasks based on their importance and urgency. Develop the habit of working diligently and persistently until each task is completed satisfactorily. Remember, success is not merely about making plans or having good intentions. It's about taking decisive action and consistently delivering results. By cultivating a proactive mindset and focusing on high-impact activities, you can maximize your potential and achieve your goals when you go to work. Start by dedicating yourself to your tasks for the entire day. If someone interrupts you for a conversation, politely defer it to a later time by saying, yes, but not now. Let's discuss this after work or during the weekend. Right now, I need to focus on my work. Eventually, people will learn to respect your time and seek out other avenues for their conversations. By developing the habit of working diligently throughout the day, you can accomplish two or three times as much. This commitment to focused work will lead to increased productivity, higher earnings, and faster career advancement. This principle holds true universally, regardless of the circumstances. In today's fast-paced world, it's common to feel overwhelmed by the endless stream of tasks and responsibilities. However, it's crucial to recognize that you can't do everything. There will always be more tasks than you can handle, leading to a perpetual feeling of being behind. Therefore, your success hinges on your ability to identify and prioritize your most important tasks at any given moment. By promptly starting and efficiently completing these tasks, you can make significant strides towards your goals. In fact, an average person who prioritizes tasks and completes them quickly will outperform a genius who procrastinates and fails to take decisive action. It's often said that tackling your most challenging task first thing in the morning is akin to eating a live frog. By confronting your biggest and most daunting task head-on, you set the tone for a productive day and maximize your impact. Resist the temptation to procrastinate or tackle easier tasks first. Instead, prioritize based on importance and urgency. In summary, developing a habit of prioritizing tasks and working diligently can transform your productivity and effectiveness. By consistently dedicating yourself to your most important tasks, you can achieve remarkable results and propel yourself toward success you'll be feeling mentally energized all day long. Step number two in the formula is to make a list of everything you have to do that day. Sit down and jot down everything you need to accomplish, then plan your day accordingly. Step number three is to organize your list by priorities. Determine what's most important, 
what's second most important, and so on. Assign a number to each task, ranking them in order of importance. The fourth step is to start on your most important task. Work on it single-mindedly, with concentration, focus, and discipline, until it's completed. Then, move on to task number two, and repeat the process. Ensure that each task you start is fully completed, before moving on to the next one. The difficulty people face in completing their tasks is truly astounding. In a study among 106 chief executive officers last year, they were asked which qualities, out of 26, would be most important in putting a person on the fast track to success in their company. Almost unanimously, they agreed on two qualities, the ability to set priorities and a sense of urgency, the ability to get tasks finished promptly. In today's business world, you're rewarded for getting specific, measurable results. Failure to execute is one of the biggest problems in organizations today. Many people confuse activity with accomplishment, attending endless meetings and making elaborate plans, but ultimately failing to deliver the results required. Fully 95% of your success in life and work will be determined by the habits you develop over time. The habit of setting priorities, overcoming procrastination, and getting on with your most important tasks is a mental and physical skill that can be learned through practice and repetition until it becomes ingrained in your behavior. Becoming an expert at time management means becoming proficient at setting clear goals and objectives for every area of your life, especially your work life. Your ability to set goals and clear objectives can significantly increase your productivity, potentially by as much as 50%, virtually overnight. It's essential to regularly ask yourself, what am I trying to do, and how am I trying to do it? Many people working today aren't clear about the answers to these questions hindering their effectiveness. If you were to ask thousands of workers in the American workplace about the major source of stress, you'd find that it often boils down to not knowing what's expected of them. Your ability to set clear goals and objectives for your work is crucial. It influences your productivity more than you might realize. In fact, one of the worst ways to waste time is by excelling at tasks that need not be done at all. You're wired in a way that completing tasks gives you a positive boost. It makes you feel accomplished and empowered. Task completion triggers the release of endorphins in your brain, leading to a natural high that boosts creativity and confidence. You can develop a positive addiction to these endorphins and the feelings of clarity and confidence they bring. Developing a habit of starting and finishing important tasks is key to living a fulfilling life and having a successful career. Once this behavior becomes ingrained, completing important tasks becomes easier than not completing them. It's like the musician's advice on how to get to Carnegie Hall. Practice, practice, practice. Your mind is like a muscle that grows stronger with use, allowing you to learn new behaviors and habits. To develop habits of focus and concentration, you need three qualities. Decision, discipline, and determination. Make a decision to develop these habits. Discipline yourself to practice them until they're mastered, and back everything you do with determination until the habits become ingrained in your personality. Visualizing yourself as a highly productive, action-oriented individual can accelerate your progress toward becoming that person. Your self-image largely determines your outward performance, so envision yourself as the person you aspire to be. This mental picture of yourself can significantly influence your behavior and ultimately lead to greater success and fulfillment. Imagine this. Standing at the edge of a vast forest, the trees towering high, their leaves whispering secrets of ancient wisdom in the wind. This forest, much like the journey of life, is filled with paths, some trodden, others hidden, awaiting the first footfall. You've been here before, at the precipice of change, wondering whether to step into the unknown or to stay within the comforting embrace of the familiar. But here's a truth as old as time itself. Your life won't change until you do. Let me share a story, a simple yet profound tale of a man named Alex. Alex lived a life many would consider satisfactory. He had a job that paid the bills, a family he loved, and friends he cherished. Yet within him, there was a quiet storm brewing, a yearning for something more, something different. Alex's life was a reflection of the choices he made every day, choices born from habits and fears that had nestled comfortably into the crevice of his being over the years. One day, Alex came across an old dusty book in the attic. The book, worn by time, spoke of great adventures of individuals who dared to dream and chase those dreams against all odds. As Alex turned the pages, a realization dawned on him. These stories weren't just tales of courage and adventure. 
They were mirrors reflecting a fundamental truth. The only constant in life is change, and the only obstacle to that change is oneself. You see, much like Alex, we often wait for a sign, a miraculous shift in the winds of fate to transform our lives. But what if I told you that the most powerful catalyst for change lies within you? It's not the changing of the seasons or the hands of fate that take the course of your life. It's the choices you make, the steps you decide to take or not take. Change is an inside job. It begins the moment you take responsibility for your life, to hold the reins and steer yourself toward the horizon you yearn to reach. It requires a willingness to look inward, to confront the fears and habits that have held you back, and to say, no more. But how, you might ask, does one affect self-transformation? It starts with a decision, a decision to be better, to do better. It's about setting a direction for your life, not with the certainty of reaching the destination unscathed, but with the courage to face whatever comes your way. Remember Alex's story. It's not just a tale of change, it's a call to action, a reminder that the forest of life is vast and unknown, but it's through stepping into it that we find our true selves. Your life won't change until you do. So what step will you take today towards the life you dream of? Understanding the power of personal accountability, it's easy to point fingers, to lay the blame on circumstances or others for where we find ourselves in life. However, the moment we take ownership of our actions, decisions, and their outcomes, we step into a realm of limitless potential. Imagine standing at a crossroads, the paths before you veiled in mist, each direction promising its trials and treasures. This crossroads, dear friends, is not just a metaphor for life's pivotal moments, but also a representation of the daily choices we face. Choices that mold our destiny, shape our character, and define our journey in the grand tapestry of life, where every thread represents our actions and decisions. There lies a profound truth. The quality of our lives is not determined by the challenges we encounter, but by how we respond to them. This realization brings us to the core of personal growth and achievement, the power of personal accountability. Personal accountability is akin to being the captain of your ship in the vast ocean of life. It's about acknowledging that while we cannot control the winds of fate, we have the power to adjust our sails, to steer our course, and to navigate through the storms to reach our desired shores. It embodies the understanding that for our lives to change, we must first change, and for our circumstances to improve, we must first improve ourselves. Now let's delve into the essence of personal accountability. It starts with a simple yet transformative realization. Every action we take, every decision we make, holds the power to shape our destiny. When we choose to take responsibility for our actions and their outcomes, we step into a realm of empowerment and possibility. We move from being passive observers of our lives to active creators of our destiny. But how, you might wonder, can we cultivate this powerful trait in our daily lives? It begins with the courage to look inward, to examine our lives with honesty and humility. It requires us to ask ourselves thought-provoking questions. Are my actions aligned with my goals? Am I taking steps that lead me closer to my dreams? Or am I merely drifting along, pushed by the currents of circumstance? Personal accountability is paved with the bricks of self-reflection, goal-setting, and resilience. It involves setting clear, actionable objectives for ourselves, beacons of light to guide us through the fog. Writing down our goals, reviewing them regularly, and adjusting our course as necessary are crucial steps in this journey. Moreover, embracing a mindset of positivity and solution-focused thinking is vital. Instead of dwelling on mistakes and setbacks, view them as opportunities for learning and growth. Encourage yourself, celebrate your progress no matter how small, and always keep your eyes on the prize. Feedback too plays a crucial role in our journey. Seeking and embracing honest feedback from those around us can shine a light on our blind spots, offering invaluable insights into how we can improve and evolve. It is not a tool for criticism, but a gift for growth. Let's not forget the importance of resilience, the ability to rise every time we fall, to learn from our failures, and to press on with unwavering determination. The path of personal accountability is strewn with challenges, but it is these very challenges that forge our character, that turn our dreams into reality. Let me remind you that personal accountability is not a destination, but a journey. It is not about attaining perfection, but about striving for progress, 
about making a conscious effort every day to take the reins of your life firmly in your hands. It's about recognizing that while the seas of life may be tumultuous, the power to navigate through them lies within you. Let this principle of personal accountability be our guiding star. Let it inform our decisions, shape our actions, and lead us to the life we dream of. Remember, the only limits that exist are the ones we place on ourselves. Break free from these chains. Embrace personal accountability. And watch as the doors to a new world of possibilities swing wide open before you. Now, as we journey further into the realms of untapped potential and personal transformation, carry the torch of personal accountability, illuminating our path to greatness. Remember, the change we seek in the world begins with the change we make within ourselves. Having navigated the waters of personal accountability, we find ourselves at a pivotal moment, standing at the threshold of our own untapped potential. Imagine for a moment that within you lies a treasure, a well of potential so vast and deep, that it could transform your life in ways you've never even dared to dream. This isn't just a flight of fancy, it's a reality that many of us are yet to fully embrace. The concept of untapped potential is not merely an abstract idea. It's the very essence of our being. It's the recognition that each one of us has within us, a reservoir of talents, abilities, and strengths that, when fully realized, can lead us to achieve greatness beyond our imagination. But the question that often looms large is, how do we tap into this wellspring of potential? The journey to uncovering this treasure within begins with a mirror. A mirror that reflects not just our exterior, but the vast expanse of our inner landscape. Self-reflection is the key that unlocks the door to understanding our potential. It involves taking a step back, looking inward, and asking ourselves some tough but essential questions. Who am I really? What are my strengths? Where do I excel? And in what areas could I improve? This process of self-examination is not always easy. It requires honesty, courage, and a willingness to confront our limitations. Yet it is through this introspective journey that we begin to chart the course towards our true destiny. Recognizing our personal strengths is like discovering the sails of our ship. Sails that can catch the wind and propel us forward towards our goals. These strengths are unique to each of us. They are our gifts, our talents, the things that we do effortlessly and joyfully. Embracing and leveraging these strengths allows us to navigate life's challenges with grace and to make a meaningful a impact in the world. But understanding our potential isn't just about recognizing our strengths, it's also about acknowledging our areas for improvement. These are not weaknesses, but opportunities. Opportunities for growth, learning, and transformation. Just as a ship sometimes needs repairs to sail at its best, we too must be willing to work on ourselves, to shore up the areas where we're not as strong, and to develop new skills and capabilities. Realizing our untapped potential is both exhilarating and challenging. It requires us to step out of our comfort zones, to push beyond our perceived limitations, and to embrace the possibility of failure as a stepping stone to success. It's a journey that demands consistency, resilience, and an unwavering belief in our ability to achieve greatness. As we stand here at the crossroads of possibility, let us make a commitment to ourselves. Let us vow to embark on this journey of self-discovery, to dive deep into the well of our untapped potential, and to emerge not just with a clearer understanding of who we are, but with a vision of who we can become. Let us approach this journey with an open heart and an open mind, ready to learn, to grow, and to soar to new heights. The landscape of personal growth is vast and varied, but our untapped potential is the compass that guides us. Let us heed its call, let us chart our course, and let us set sail towards the horizon of our dreams. As we journey forward, let us remember that our potential is boundless, our capacity for change infinite. The journey of transforming our habits is not just about achieving specific goals. It's about becoming the architects of our destiny, one habit at a time. Now, let us step into the light of understanding, embracing the role of habits in our personal transformation, and let the change we desire in our lives begin with the change we foster within ourselves. We've navigated the significance of personal accountability, delved into the untapped wells of potential within us, and learned the transformative power of habits. Now, let's turn our attention to a barrier that often stands as a formidable adversary on our path to growth. Seer. Tear. Tear of failure. Fear of the unknown, fear of stepping out of our comfort zones, 
These are but a few of the specters that haunt our journey towards change. Yet it is in the heart of these fears that we find the seeds of our greatest growth and opportunity. Fear, in its essence, is a natural response to the uncertainty that change brings. It whispers tales of caution, of potential pitfalls, and the possibility of not measuring up to our aspirations. But here's a thought to ponder. What if, instead of viewing fear as a signal to retreat, we saw it as a beacon guiding us towards the very areas in which we need to grow? What if the presence of fear was not an indication to stop but a sign that we're on the verge of something truly significant? Consider the fear of failure, a common companion to many of us as we contemplate stepping into new territories, whether personal, professional, or otherwise. This fear often paralyzes, keeping us tethered to the familiar, to the safety of the harbor. Yet it is only by sailing into uncharted waters that we discover new lands, new strengths, and new facets of ourselves. Embracing failure as an integral part of the learning process transforms it from an end into a stepping stone. Remember, every great achievement was once considered impossible. Every successful person has faced and overcome failures. It is through these trials that resilience is forged and character is built. Similarly, the fear of the unknown can be a daunting obstacle. The comfort of our current realities, even if they are less than what we desire, can be a powerful deterrent to seeking change. However, the unknown is not an abyss, but a canvas, vast, and waiting for the brushstrokes of our choices and actions. Embracing the unknown requires a leap of faith, a belief in our abilities to adapt, to learn, and to thrive in new environments. It is in the unknown that we find innovation, creativity, and the possibilities for a life that aligns more closely with our deepest values and aspirations. So, how do we begin to overcome these fears and embrace change as an opportunity for growth? It starts with a shift in perspective. Instead of asking, what if I fail, ask, what if I succeed? Instead of fearing the unknown, wonder about the possibilities it might hold. This shift doesn't eliminate fear, but it changes the conversation, turning fear into a dialogue about potential, rather than a monologue of doubt. Cultivating a mindset of growth and resilience plays a crucial role. Understand that you are more capable than you know, that each step into the unfamiliar builds your strength and broadens your horizon. Surround yourself with stories of those who have faced their fears and emerged victorious, stronger, and wiser. Like action, fear loses its grip when confronted with decisive action. Start small, take initial steps towards your goals, and with each step, you'll find the shadows of fear receding, replaced by the light of confidence and the clarity of purpose. Embrace fear not as an enemy but as a guide, pointing us towards the growth we seek. Let us step boldly into change, knowing that on the other side of fear lies a world of possibilities waiting to be discovered. Remember, the only way to truly overcome fear is to go through it, to let it teach us, and to emerge on the other side not fearless but braver and ready for the challenges and triumphs that lie ahead. Carry this newfound understanding of fear and change into the realm of setting and achieving our goals. Let these insights illuminate our path, showing us that the real magic happens not when we've reached our destination, but in the journey itself, in the growth, learning, and overcoming that takes place along the way. Achieving our dreams and aspirations can often seem like a challenging and arduous path. Yet, the secret to navigating this path successfully lies in setting clear, achievable goals. This concept isn't just about dreaming big. It's about creating a roadmap for personal change a blueprint that transforms those dreams into tangible realities. The importance of setting clear, achievable goals cannot be overstated. Goals act as our guiding stars, illuminating the path through the fog of daily distractions, providing us with clarity, focus, and a sense of direction. Without goals, we risk being adrift, subject to the whims of circumstance. But with them, we become the masters of our destiny. Setting goals, however, is as much an art as it is a science. It begins with envisioning what we want to achieve. This vision must be crystal clear, detailed to the point where you can see, feel, and almost touch it. Such clarity transforms mere wishes into powerful intentions. Yet, understanding the importance of goals is only the first step. The next is to learn how to set these goals effectively. Goals should be specific, leaving no room for ambiguity. They should be measurable, allowing us to track our progress. They must also be realistic yet ambitious enough to stretch our capabilities. 
and importantly, they should be time-bound, giving us a deadline to work towards. But how do we keep ourselves on this path? How do we ensure that we don't stray from our set goals? The key lies in creating an action plan, breaking down our goals into smaller manageable tasks. Each task completed is a step closer to our ultimate goal. It's about acknowledging every small victory along the way, which keeps us motivated and committed to our path. However, setting goals and creating action plans is just the beginning. Staying on track requires persistence, discipline and strategies to keep us focused. Regular reviewing and adjusting our goals ensure they remain relevant and achievable. Understanding why we want to achieve a particular goal provides the motivation to keep going, especially when challenges arise. Sharing our goals with someone we trust can provide an additional layer of motivation. Knowing we're not alone in our journey. Visualizing our success. Spending time each day imagining achieving our goals can be a powerful motivator, making our goals feel more real and attainable. Ultimately, the process of setting and achieving goals is about more than just reaching a destination. It's about the journey, the growth, and the transformation we undergo along the way. It's about becoming the person capable of achieving those goals. A person of discipline, focus, and unwavering determination. The journey with a clear vision, armed with the tools and strategies to navigate the path ahead. Let us set our goals, commit to them, and take action every day. Let us celebrate every step forward, no matter how small, and let us never lose sight of our guiding stars. For in setting and achieving our goals, we don't just change our circumstances, we change ourselves. And in doing so, we unlock the potential for extraordinary achievements and a life of purpose and fulfillment. Two qualities stand out as indispensable threads weaving through the fabric of every success story ever told. Persistence and resilience. These are not merely traits possessed by the fortunate few. They are muscles strengthened through the rigorous exercise of facing challenges head-on and refusing to be knocked down by setbacks. Imagine for a moment the journey of a single water droplet persistently making its way through layers of rock not with force, but with a steady, unwavering presence. Over time, this persistence transforms the landscape, carving canyons and shaping the very earth. Similarly, resilience is the tree that bends in the storm but does not break, finding strength and flexibility. And in doing so, it stands tall once the winds have passed. Your path to significant life changes is often littered with obstacles that seem insurmountable. It is during these times that persistence and resilience become our greatest allies. They remind us that success is not the absence of failure, but the ability to continue moving forward despite it. Consider the story of a young girl with a dream of becoming an author. The dream met with rejection after rejection from publishers. Each letter could have been the end of her story, a sign to give up and move on. Yet, it was her persistence, her unwavering belief in her story, that kept her going. This young girl was J.K. Rowling, and the book that was rejected by 12 publishers was Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. A book that would go on to captivate the world. Rowling's resilience in the face of rejection transformed her life, and the lives of millions of readers across the globe. Or consider the inventor who was told that a deaf person could never create anything of value. This inventor faced failure after failure over a thousand times in his quest to create the electric light bulb. Yet, Thomas Edison refused to see these failures as anything but steps on the path to success. His persistence and resilience not only led to the invention of the light bulb, but also laid the foundation for the modern electric world. The stories and countless others like them highlight a fundamental truth. The journey towards achieving our goals is never a straight line. It is a path fraught with challenges, setbacks, and moments of doubt. Yet, it is precisely in these moments that the true essence of our character is revealed. So, how do we cultivate these essential qualities? First, by embracing challenges as opportunities for growth. Instead of shying away from difficulties, we must learn to approach them with curiosity and a willingness to learn. Each challenge we overcome not only brings us closer to our goals, but also builds our resilience, making us stronger for the next hurdle. Second, by maintaining a positive outlook. Our perspective in the face of setbacks can make all the difference. By choosing to see the silver lining, to find the lesson in each failure, we fuel our persistence and keep the flame of our dreams alive. By surrounding ourselves with stories of resilience and persistence, the stories of those who have walked before us, we find inspiration and motivation. 
Let them remind us that the only true failure is giving up. Persistence and resilience are our companions. Remember that every setback is an opportunity to rise stronger. That every challenge is a call to dig deeper and push further. For in the end, it is not the magnitude of our achievements that defines us, but the strength of our spirit, the unwavering persistence, and resilience we demonstrate in the pursuit of our dreams. We've traversed the landscape of change, from understanding the bedrock of personal accountability to diving into the depths of our untapped potential. We've navigated the transformative power of habits and stared down the specter of fear, turning it from an adversary into an ally. Bell this journey, we've learned that setting clear achievable goals is not just about reaching a destination. It's about the journey itself and the person we become along the way. We've celebrated the indomitable spirit, recognizing that within each of us lies the strength to overcome any obstacle and turn setbacks into stepping stones. Now, as we stand at the threshold of tomorrow, I extend to you a call to action. The personal change begins with a single step, a step that you have the power to take today. Don't wait for the perfect moment. The perfect moment is now. Set a goal, no matter how small, and take that first step towards achieving it. Embrace the challenges that come your way as opportunities to grow, to learn, and to become stronger. Remember the only limits that exist are those you place upon yourself. The path ahead is yours to shape. Armed with the lessons we've shared, the wisdom you've gained, and the courage that resides within you, step boldly into the future. Let today be the day you commit to personal change, to unleashing your full potential, and to crafting a life of purpose, passion, and unparalleled achievement. The journey begins now. Let's embark on this adventure together, with persistence, resilience, and a heart full of dreams, ready to turn those dreams into reality. I welcome you to bring forward your questions, your uncertainties, and your aspirations. It's in these shared moments of curiosity and vulnerability that we can uncover insights tailored to your personal journey of growth and change. Perhaps you're wondering, how do I find clarity in my goals when everything seems so uncertain? Let me share with you that clarity begins with introspection. Take a moment to reflect on what truly matters to you, what ignites your passion, and what drives you. Start with broad visions and gradually narrow them down to specific goals. Remember, it's not about having all the answers from the start, but being willing to embark on the journey of discovery. Or maybe your question is, how can I stay motivated when progress feels slow? Understand that progress is not always measured in leaps and bounds. More often it's the small, consistent steps that lead to significant changes over time. Celebrate every small victory, every step forward, no matter how minor it may seem. And remind yourself why you started on this path in the first place. Your why is your anchor, keeping you steadfast in the face of challenges. For those asking, how do I bounce back from setbacks? Remember that resilience is like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the stronger it becomes. View setbacks not as insurmountable obstacles, but as learning opportunities. Ask yourself, what can this teach me? Each setback is a chance to refine your approach. And to the person pondering, how can I make lasting changes in my life? Know that lasting change begins with small, sustainable shifts in your daily habits and choices. Focus on one change at a time, integrate it into your life until it becomes second nature, and then build on that foundation. Change is a journey, not a sprint. Patience and persistence are your companions. Lastly, for anyone feeling overwhelmed by the journey ahead, take a deep breath and remember, you don't have to face it alone. Seek out mentors, Join communities of like-minded individuals, and don't hesitate to ask for support. Together we are stronger, and together, we can navigate the complexities of personal transformation. I want to leave you with this thought. Every question you've asked today reflects your commitment to growth and change. Hold on to that curiosity, that willingness to seek answers, and to challenge yourself. It is in this spirit of inquiry and openness to learning that true growth occurs. Thank you for your engaging questions and for taking this step towards personal transformation. How we feel plays such a major part in our future. First, it's what we know so we can make wise decisions about danger and opportunity. But second is how we feel about the past. You need a healthy attitude about the past so that you use it, not live in it. Use it, not carry it like a burden, 
but let the wise lessons you learn from the past serve as fuel to furnish the future. Next, a good attitude about the future. You've got to set your goals. We look back for experience, but we look forward for inspiration. We must be instructed and inspired. No better inspiration than the successful. I started this process when I was 25. It literally rocked my world, changed my life. I had no idea it was so simple. Here's how simple it is. Decide what you want, write it all down, make a list of the people you want to meet, make a list of the books you want to read, make a list of the classes you want to take, make a list of the skills you want to learn, make a list of the cities you want to visit, make a list of the investments you want to have. Just make these lists. Here's the next step. Start checking them off. Put a lot of little things on some lists so you can start checking off something right away. That's part of the fun. Here's what's next. If you check off something major, celebrate, because that inspires you to make a long list of both and put everything on your list. Little things insignificant to someone else but important to you. I put a little revenge on my first list. My mentor said it's healthy. Some of the people who said I couldn't succeed, kids from the farms of Idaho, they went on my list. Couldn't wait to get my new car. Drive it up on their lawn and say, Oh, pardon me, here's the money to have it fixed. This little satisfaction. My Japanese friend, TWIA San Jose, California, put me on his first list. Okay, a Caucasian gardener. Back then, everybody had a Japanese gardener. Everybody Japanese garden. I said, I'm Japanese, I'm going to have a Caucasian garden. Okay, little satisfaction, right? Set your goals, decide what you want. Write it down, start checking them off, it's powerful stuff. Next, it's how you feel about everybody. If you want to be a true leader, an entrepreneur of the highest order, well-respected, unique in your field, here's number one, how you feel about everybody. And this is philosophical as well. You cannot succeed by yourself. So a unique sense of appreciation of everybody goes with the territory of leadership. It takes everybody for each of us to be successful. One person doesn't make an economy, one person doesn't make a symphony orchestra. It takes everybody. For this gathering today, all of you had to be here to make this together. Everybody. If one of you were missing, there wouldn't be this many people here. Everybody to make something work. For the office, whatever. The enterprise takes everybody. The gift of America is everybody who came over the last two. Three hundred years bringing with them their gifts. No country has become such a depository of the gifts of the world, like America has over the last two, three hundred years. People coming, bringing their gifts. Gift of language, gift of learning, gift of politics, gift of government, gift of medicine, gift of healing, gift of music, and gift of the work ethic. All this came in steady streams from all over the world, making us unusual because of the gifts that were brought. And to understand that and appreciate it now, gives you open access to the market that's available to make your fortune. Now what I love to do is go back where these gifts came from. Not long ago, I was in Rome. Had a thousand people in my class. Someone suggested, Iman loves the music of Andrea Bocelli, the blind opera singer from Italy. So when they introduced me, I walked to the podium, and all one thousand of these Italians stood up and sang for me one of Andrea Bocelli's songs in true Italian style. Years I described it to my grandchildren later. I said, here was the scene, a choir of a thousand and an audience of one. And that was me. I thought, here's where some of these gifts sting. The gift of poetry, gifts. To learn to appreciate the gifts. Now the last attitude is how you feel about yourself. Nothing more powerful than self-esteem, which creates self-confidence. The greatest steps toward success come from self-confidence, and that comes from self-esteem. Doing what you know you should, so that at the end of the day, you have high self-esteem. If you think in a positive way, you'll have positive results, and you'll be happy most of the time. So, how do you use the power of positive thinking? Well, they did a study at the University of Pennsylvania, funded by some of the biggest companies in America. Over a 22-year period, they interviewed more than 350,000 people like you and I, and asked them a lot of questions about their lives and their attitudes. One of the questions they asked them is, what do you think about most of the time? And they conducted a series of experiments. They would have graduate students who were working on their papers in psychology or sociology phone these people once a week, at random, during the week and just say, what are you thinking about right now? 
they'd write it down, and the next week, they'd call them on a different day, at a different time. This is all prearranged that they would be expecting the call sometime. What are you thinking about right now? Let me write it down. Then they began to sort these groups out in terms of deciles, which is 10, the bottom 10%, the next 10%, all the way up to the top 10%. And they noticed that people in the top 10% thought very differently from people in the bottom 80%. What do top people think about most of the time? Can you guess? The answer was so simple, it was amazing. They think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. They think about their goals and their priorities, their actions and activities each day. They think about the number of people they need to call on, the number of proposals they need to put together, and the number of things they need to read and study. They're always thinking about what they want, and when you think about what you want, it makes you happy. It makes you positive. It makes you feel in control of your whole life. And then, they think about how to get it. So, in my seminars, I'll say that the most important word for leadership and success is the word how. Whenever you have a goal, the only question you ask is, how can I achieve this goal? If I have a problem, how can I solve this problem? If you have an obstacle, how can I overcome the obstacle? Top people think about what they want and how to get it most of the time. And as a result, they're thinking about their goal. And they're thinking about the actions they could take every single minute of every day to move faster toward achieving that goal. Earl Nightingale once said that happiness is the progressive step-by-step -step realization of a worthy ideal or goal. When you feel yourself moving step-by-step, -step, each hour, each day, toward achieving something that's important to you, you feel positive and happy most of the time. By the way, do you know what unsuccessful people think about most of the time? They think about what they don't want, the things that make them angry or sad, usually past events that they can't change, and they think about who's to blame for all their problems. So the way you take control of your mind, like grabbing the wheel of a vehicle, is to start to think about what you want, how to get it all day long. Your expectations largely determine the quality of your life. In this sense, whatever you expect with confidence becomes your self-fulfilling prophecy. In other words, you're always telling your future by the way you talk about how you think things are going to turn out. You're like a fortune teller in your own life, and if you believe that things are going to turn out well, then by gosh they do. If you believe that you're going to be popular, and that people are going to buy, and that you have a great product and a great company, then you act that way. So it's very very important that you always expect the best. And this is the key. Expect the best, expect the best, expect the best. Expect the best of yourself, expect the best of other people, but especially expect the best of people who look up to you. One of the discoveries that Harvard University made is that there are two qualities of child raising that raise happy healthy kids. Two qualities, by the way, that raise happy, healthy, powerful business teams as well, and sales teams. Number one is a democratic environment. A democratic environment is where everybody is welcome to express their opinions, and people discuss and debate and get feedback, and they make their decisions based on consensus. So everybody feels valuable and important and respected. That's number one. For kids, it's phenomenal. Ever since my kids have been little, I always ask for their opinion. What would you like to do? Where would you like to go? Now, as they grow up, we take turns. Where would you like to go for dinner? Where would you like to go? And so on. And the kids decide. And now, when they're adults, they feel that their opinion is valid. When they meet with other adults, they feel that their opinion is valid, because I've ingrained in them all their lives that their opinion is worth something. So, number one is a democratic environment. Number two is a climate of positive expectations. It's the parents' expectation that their kids will do well. Just like I tell my kids, you're going to be a very successful person when you grow up. You're going to do extremely well. You're going to be very popular. You're going to get good grades. When you expect the best of your children, children rise to your expectations. They may argue with you, they may reject, they may discount your positive statements because you're a parent, but it affects them at an unconscious level. I remember reading a wonderful line from a journalist. He said, My father was not very talkative. He was a good man, but he didn't talk very much. But I do remember him saying one thing which affected my whole life. He said, Son, I expect you to do something worthwhile with your life when you grow up. He said, I still remember that because whenever it came up he'd say, Son, whatever you do, 
I expect you to do something worthwhile with your life when you grow up. He said, that rang in my mind all my life. He said, I've driven all my life to do something worthwhile with my life just because of the positive expectations. So, it's really important telling people that you expect the best of them. If you're married, telling your spouse that you believe in them and that you expect the best and you believe they'll be successful. And if they're not successful, then they'll learn something. They'll be successful next time. It's repeating that over and over again is the greatest blessing that a person can have. Okay, so expect the best. Expect the best. Expect the best of other people. Expect the best of yourself too. I want to talk to you today about one of the most important single aspects of success, of all kinds of success. And it's what you've heard of called the positive mental attitude. A positive mental attitude is a generally constructive response to the stresses that face the average person every single day. A positive attitude is where you feel that you have the ability to control your world and your life. A positive attitude is like a chicken and egg thing. If you're successful, you're positive. If you're positive, you're successful. Which comes first doesn't really matter. But we know this. Positive thinkers are men and women who accomplish an awful lot more than people who have negative mental attitudes. Your job is to develop a positive mental attitude. Your job is to become thoroughly positive and constructive toward yourself, your possibilities, and the world around you, and the people in your life, and the way you develop physical fitness in very much the same way as you do this. Now, if I were to say to you, if you go to a gym and work out on a regular basis for an hour or an hour and a half a day, and you do this every day for 30 days, and you match that with a proper diet, you'll actually see a difference in yourself physically. Now, if I were to say that to you, you'd say, of course anybody knows that if you worked out steadily for 30 days, you'd notice the difference. Well, it's the same thing with mental fitness. So, I'm going to ask you to do this for me. I'm going to give you seven steps, seven things that you can do, seven things that have been proven to work. What I'm going to ask you to do is to practice these seven steps for 21 days. The reason for this is, it takes 21 days to develop a new habit pattern of any kind. If you work on a habit pattern and practice it every day, you'll begin to develop new neural grooves in your brain that cause you to think and act more optimistically automatically. You'll wake up in the morning feeling better. You'll be more positive toward the challenges you face during the day. You'll be more optimistic in the face of adversity. And you'll start to become a more confident and optimistic person. And when you do, you'll find your whole life will open up around you like sunshine on a bright morning. There are seven basic steps to mental fitness. If you practice all of these steps together, what will happen to you is incredible. But here's the first rule, and this is the rule that runs through everything, and it is this. Remember that everything counts. Everything that you do counts. The biggest mistake that people make is they think that only what they want to count, counts. No. When you read a book, when you listen to an audio program, when you go to a course, when you go to bed early and get up early, and you work, it all counts, and it's all going on the plus side of your ledger. But when you watch television, waste time, hang out, fool around, and so on, all of that counts as well, and it's going on the negative side of your ledger. And here's an important point. If what you are doing is not moving you toward your goals, then it's probably moving you away from your goals. Nothing is neutral. Everything that you're doing is either moving you toward the things that you want to accomplish in life, the person you want to be, the wealth you want to accumulate, or it's moving you away. Everything counts. Number one is positive self-talk. Positive self-talk means that you are optimistic in your conversation with yourself. What we have found is that 95% of your emotions, how you feel about yourself on a minute-to-minute -minute basis, are determined by the way you talk to yourself. This is called your inner dialogue. It's the stream of words and thoughts and feelings that course through your day, like a river going through your mind. The sad fact is that if you do not deliberately and consciously talk to yourself in a positive and constructive way, you will, by default, think about things that will make you unhappier. Because you worry and have anxiety. Remember, your mind is like a vacuum. It will not remain empty. If you don't fill it with positive thoughts, it will fill with negative thoughts. And you know exactly what I'm talking about. Your mind is like a garden. If you do not deliberately plant flowers and tend to them carefully, weeds will grow without any encouragement at all. If you don't think positive thoughts and take good care of them, negative thoughts will grow in your mental garden without any effort on your part. 
Your entire world around you is a mirror that reflects back to you your dominant thoughts. They say, wherever you look, there you are. It's almost like you live in a 360 degree mirror, and wherever you look, you see yourself reflected back. Now, the three or four places where this is most common is first of all, your relationships. Now, remember, human beings are extraordinarily sensitive, so that if you have negative thoughts going on about anything, you affect the relationships close to you instantaneously. They'll pick it up across the crowded room. Women, by the way, are far better at this than men. Men are kind of like blocks of cheese, but women are like high-tech computers. Have you ever had an experience? Every man's had this. They phone home, they say hi, and she says, What's wrong? That's all you said is, Hello. She said, What's wrong? Is it your boss again? How did you know? A woman can pick it up with a single word. You can walk in the door and say, Hi, and she'll just go, Ooh, maybe it's at me. She'll just read. With regard to relationships, almost instantaneously, we'll show you what's going on inside your own thoughts. If you're feeling happy, your relationships will reflect it immediately. If you're unhappy or angry for some reason, they'll reflect on it immediately. A second area, by the way, has to do with income. Your outer world of income will be determined by your inner world of attitude toward money, earning, productivity, performance, and everything else. With regard to your health, your inner world of attitude toward health, food, diet, fitness, everything else determines your external world of health and also success. If you believe that you're going to be a big success, if you believe it on the inside, then you'll see it. It'll be reflected back to you in your outer world. Intelligent people realize that whatever they see in their outer world is coming from themselves. So they always ask this great question. What is it in me? What is it in me that is causing what's going on in my environment? Now this is the mark, the question of the superior person. The average person always tries to blame something in their external environment or someone past, present, future. Another mental law, the law of belief. This is a biggie. This is really the biggie. This is the foundation principle of all religions and all philosophies and all success. The law of belief says that whatever you believe with feeling becomes your reality, because you always act on the basis of your beliefs. And the more intensely you hold the belief, the more the belief becomes true for you. There are conscious beliefs that we have, and there are unconscious beliefs. There's that wonderful line from Josh Billings, the humorist. He said, it ain't what a man knows that hurts him. It's what he knows that ain't true. And many things we know about ourselves ain't true at all. What we do is we develop SCAs or blind spots. Once we've decided to believe certain things, we do not see anything that contradicts it. We may be doing wonderful work or being very successful, but we don't even see that. If we decide to believe that we will never make much more than we're making, sometimes your parents will tell you, you know, you've got to be worried about money. You've got to be careful about money all your life, and you'll never make very much. So you've got to hold on to every penny. And so people just hunker down, and they're more concerned about security than anything else. And so we develop these beliefs, these blind spots. And sometimes you need somebody to come along and open it up so you can see this vast world of possibilities that you have. And when this happens, people change completely. But your biggest obstacle is usually self-limiting beliefs. So what are your self-limiting beliefs? What are the most common ones? Well, the most common ones are, internally, I'm not smart enough. I'm not as smart as other people. Or I'm not talented enough. Or I'm not creative enough. Is that no one's born with any beliefs? every belief you have about yourself, your potential, the world, religion, politics, people, anything, every belief you have, you had to be taught meticulously, with very careful instruction, repeated over and over again. And so the starting point of using the law of belief on your behalf, is first of all, you ask yourself, what beliefs would it be useful or helpful to me to have? And imagine that you could go to the belief store, and buy a belief like a piece of software, and program it into your hard drive, so it became part of your operating system. But if you could only choose one belief, what would be a good belief to buy? Well, a friend of mine spent 18 years studying the biographies of more than 500 men and women who had started with nothing and became successful. And he was looking for the common denominator of success. And he found it. He found that every single one of these people throughout their lives absolutely believed that they were going to be a big success. 
They absolutely believed they were going to be a big success when they grew up. And no matter what happened to them in their adult lives, they never lost sight of that. Like the three wise men in Following the Star, they felt that everything that happened was part of the process. Every setback was a lesson. Every pain was something sent to teach them something that would be helpful. And they never stopped believing in themselves. So if you could buy one belief, the belief is that you are destined to be a big success. That you have incredible potential. That you're surrounded by incredible opportunities. And that you're going to be a huge success in life. And everything that's happened up to now is part of your preparation. So challenge your self-limiting beliefs. Don't ever say, I can't do that, or I'm not good at that, or something else. No, wait a second. What if that's totally false? What if deep down inside, you have the ability to be extraordinary? That's something that's important to you. Whether it's skiing or skydiving or mathematics or selling or earning money or running a business. You probably have more ability than you could dream of. But don't sell yourself short. Now in the Bible it says, according to your faith, that is done unto you. That's one of the most important principles of the New Testament. In the Old Testament it says, as a man thinketh in his heart. And the heart stands for the subconscious mind, which means a deep belief. So is he, or so is she. William James says, beliefs create the actual fact. Is it easy to change your beliefs, especially old negative ones? No, it's not easy. Is it possible? Absolutely. Absolutely. Is it easy to lose weight? No. Is it possible? Of course it is. Imagine you're standing at the edge of a vast ocean. The water stretches out before you, endless, magnificent, and unfathomable. Now think of this ocean as the ocean of time. Every drop represents a moment of your life. How do you choose to interact with this ocean? Do you dip your toes cautiously, or do you dive in, making every splash count? Time, my friends, is the ocean in which we swim. It's the most valuable asset we have, more precious than gold, diamonds, or any treasure you can imagine. Unlike wealth, which can be accumulated, or health, which can be improved, time only diminishes, second by second. Once a moment passes, it's gone forever, leaving only ripples in its wake. You see, the beauty and tragedy of time lie in its relentless march forward. It waits for no one. This realization can either be a source of anxiety, or an incredible motivation. I want to invite you to see it as the latter. Every day is a new chapter in the book of your life, a fresh canvas on which you can paint with the vibrant colors of your passions, dreams, and actions. Consider for a moment that people who've made history, who've left an indelible mark on this world, they didn't have more time than any of us. They had 24 hours in a day, just like you and me. What set them apart was their keen awareness of time's value, and their determination to use every minute pursuing something greater than themselves. They understood that to live each day without purpose is like pouring precious water into the sand, watching it disappear with nothing to show for it. So, how do we ensure that we're not just passively watching the day slip through our fingers? It begins with intention, with the decision to not only dream, but to act, to not just exist, but to live and contribute. Each of us has the power to decide how we spend our time, to choose pursuits that add depth, joy and meaning to our lives and the lives of those around us. Living each day with purpose doesn't mean you need to make grand gestures every moment. It means being present, making choices that align with your deepest values, and taking steps, however small, toward the goals that light a fire in your heart. It's about carving out moments for the people and passions that make your life rich and fulfilling. As we embark on this journey today, I encourage you to think about the legacy you want to leave. The imprint you wish to make on this vast ocean of time. Remember, the most extraordinary lives are built one day at a time, one purposeful action after another. Let's dive into this ocean together, making every moment count, not just for our sake, but for the world that awaits the unique contributions only we can make. In the next part of our journey, let's explore what it truly means to define and live with purpose. How do we find it? And how can it transform the way we view and utilize our time? This understanding is crucial, for it shapes not only the trajectory of our lives, but the impact we have on the world around us. As we continue on this path, let's delve into the essence of time itself. Time, as we've established, is our most precious commodity. But to truly grasp its value, we must understand its finite nature. 
Each second that ticks by is a second that we can never reclaim. This realization can be a powerful catalyst for change, urging us to live more intentionally, to make each moment count. Consider the story of a young painter filled with dreams and aspirations yet constantly putting off his passion for someday. Someday I'll have more time, he'd tell himself. But one day, he encountered an elderly artist whose hands had grown too shaky to hold a brush, whose eyes too dim to see the colors as vividly as he once did. This elder shared with the young painter, I always thought I had an endless supply of tomorrows. Now, I'd give anything for just one more day of clear vision and steady hands. This conversation was a turning point for the young artist. He realized that his own reservoir of tomorrows wasn't infinite. From that day forward, he painted every day, rain or shine, busy or not. His dedication turned him into one of the most prolific artists of his generation. His work's a testament to the power of seizing the day. This story echoes a truth we often forget. We don't have an unlimited amount of time. Like the sand slipping through an hourglass, each moment gone is a moment we can't get back. How then, do we ensure that we're not merely spectators in the game of life, but active participants, making every second count? The key lies in purposeful action. Take the example of a woman who dreamt of becoming a writer. She worked a demanding job, her days a blur of activity. Yet, she felt unfulfilled. Her dream of writing novels collecting dust on the shelf of someday. Then she started waking up an hour earlier each day, dedicating the stolen time to her writing. It was a small step, but it transformed her life. With each passing day, her dream inched closer to reality. Eventually, she published her first novel, then another, and another. By carving out time from her existing schedule, she moved from dreaming to doing, from hoping to achieving. Both these individuals understood that time, once gone, is gone forever. But more importantly, they recognized that with deliberate action, even the smallest pockets of time can be transformed into stepping stones toward their dreams. They remind us that it's not about having time. It's about making time for what truly matters. As we ponder the finite nature of time and its irreplaceable quality, let's commit to using our time wisely, not letting a single drop go to waste. In the chapters ahead, we'll explore how setting goals with purpose can guide us in this endeavor, ensuring that every action we take is a step toward a life of fulfillment and achievement. Remember, the journey to a life lived with purpose begins with understanding the value of the time we have. Let this knowledge inspire us to make the most of every moment, to live fully and purposefully, creating a legacy that outlives the ticking of the clock. In our exploration of time and its profound value, we uncover a beacon that guides us through the fog of daily routines and distractions, the concept of living with purpose. Purpose is the compass that directs our actions, the lens through which we view our choices, and ultimately the measure by which we judge our days, not just as time passed, but as time lived. Living with purpose means more than just going through the motions. It's about aligning your daily life with your deeper values and goals, waking up each morning with a clear sense of what you want to achieve and why it matters. This clarity doesn't always come easily. It often requires reflection, adjustment, and sometimes a leap of faith. But those who find it, who truly grasp their purpose, embark on a journey that transforms not just their own lives, but also the lives of those around them. Consider the tale of a teacher whose passion for education extended beyond the conventional classroom. She saw potential in every child, but noticed that not all had the support to realize it. Driven by a purpose to empower, she started a community center where children could learn, play, and grow after school. This center became a haven, a place where children from challenging backgrounds found hope, guidance, and the tools to dream bigger. The teacher's purpose wasn't just to educate, it was to uplift to change lives one child at a time. Her impact was a testament to the power of a life lived with purpose, where every effort was a brick in the foundation of a better future for her community. Or take the story of an engineer who, despite a successful career, felt a disconnect between his work and his personal values. He sought not just to create but to make a difference. This quest for purpose led him to develop technologies for clean water access in underprivileged areas. His innovation didn't just solve a problem, it transformed communities, giving them the key to health, prosperity, and sustainability. His journey from a successful engineer to a champion for global water access 
highlights the evolution that finding and pursuing a purpose can spark in us, turning skills and achievements into instruments of change. These stories illuminate the essence of living with purpose. It's not about grand gestures or monumental achievements visible to the world. It's about the subtle shifts in how we approach our days, the choices we make, and the reasons behind them. It's about finding that thread that connects who we are with what we do, creating a tapestry of life that reflects our deepest selves. As we delve deeper into defining and embracing our purpose, remember, the journey to purpose is as unique as you are. There's no one-size-fits-all map. Instead, there's a path that you carve out, guided by your values, passions, and the impact you wish to have. In the next segment of our exploration, we'll discuss how setting goals with purpose can serve as stepping stones on this path, helping us navigate the journey with intention and ultimately leading us to a life rich in meaning and fulfillment. Let's carry forward this understanding, allowing it to shape not just our ambitions, but our everyday actions, knitting together a life of purpose one day, one decision at a time. As we journey through life, understanding the value of our time and embracing our purpose, we arrive at a crucial crossroad. Setting Goals Goals are the bridges between our aspirations and reality, the vehicles that carry us from where we are to where we wish to be. But not just any goals, meaningful goals, goals that resonate with our core, that align with the purpose we've nurtured within ourselves. This alignment is the heartbeat of a fulfilling life transforming ordinary objectives into powerful catalysts for personal growth and achievement. Imagine setting a goal as planting a seed. This seed holds the potential to grow into a mighty tree, but only if it's planted in fertile soil, given enough sunlight, and watered regularly. Similarly, our goals must be planted within the fertile ground of our purpose, nurtured with intention, and tended to with persistence. To set effective goals, we must employ techniques that transform vague aspirations into tangible targets. One such technique is setting SMART goals. Specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. A goal that adheres to these criteria is like a lighthouse, guiding a ship through the night, offering clarity, direction, and a measurable way to track progress. For instance, rather than saying, I want to write a book someday, a SMART goal would be, I will write a 60,000-word novel about overcoming adversity, finishing one chapter each month, completing the first draft in one year. Visualization is another powerful tool in our goal-setting arsenal. It involves painting a vivid picture in your mind of your goal as already achieved. Imagine the sense of accomplishment, the joy, the impact of your success. This technique not only inspires action, but also prepares your mind to recognize and seize opportunities that align with your objectives. Now let's talk about actionable steps and strategies. First, write down your goals. There's magic in the act of writing. It transforms ethereal thoughts into concrete intentions. Next, break down each goal into smaller manageable tasks. The journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. And it's these steps, these daily actions, that accumulate into monumental achievements. Establish routines and habits that support your goals. If your goal is to run a marathon, Make running a regular part of your routine. If your goal is to become a better speaker, practice speaking every day, even if it's just in front of a mirror. Remember, consistency is key. Hold yourself accountable, but also be kind to yourself. Celebrate at every milestone, no matter how small, and learn from every setback. Accountability partners or groups can also provide motivation and support, offering encouragement and perspective. When you need it most, in essence, Setting goals with purpose is not just about achieving what you set out to do. It's about the transformation that occurs within you as you strive towards your goals. It's about living intentionally, making the most of the time we're given, and leaving a mark on the world that reflects our deepest values and aspirations. As we move forward, let us carry with us the understanding that while setting goals is a crucial step, overcoming obstacles is part and parcel of our journey. Our next discussion will delve into how we navigate the inevitable challenges and setbacks on the path to realizing our dreams. Armed with resilience, determination, and a clear sense of purpose, in our quest to achieve our goals and live with purpose, we inevitably encounter obstacles that test our resolve, challenge our capabilities, and sometimes make us question our path. These obstacles, whether they come in the form of doubts, failures, or external circumstances, are not just barriers to our success. 
they are opportunities for growth, learning, and resilience. Let me share with you a story of a young entrepreneur whose dream was to innovate in the realm of technology. His journey was fraught with challenges. Right from the outset, he faced skepticism from potential investors, setbacks in product development, and the daunting task of entering a highly competitive market. Each obstacle seemed to push his dream further out of reach. Yet, it was his response to these challenges that defined his journey. Instead of succumbing to doubt or giving up in the face of failure, he viewed each setback as a learning opportunity. He refined his pitch, improved his product, and deepened his understanding of the market. His persistence paid off, leading to a breakthrough that revolutionized the way we interact with technology today. This entrepreneur's story embodies a powerful lesson. The path to achieving our purpose is seldom straight. It is a journey marked by highs and lows, successes and failures. The key to navigating this path lies in resilience and persistence. Resilience is the ability to bounce back from setbacks, to face challenges head-on, and emerge stronger. Persistence is the determination to keep moving forward, even when the end seems nowhere in sight. So, how do we cultivate these qualities? First and foremost, by embracing a mindset of growth. Understand that every challenge, every failure, is a stepping stone toward your goal. It's an opportunity to learn, to adapt, and to grow. When faced with a setback, ask yourself, what can I learn from this? How can I use this experience to move closer to my goal? Second, set your sights on the long-term vision. It's easy to get disheartened by short-term failures, but remember, achieving meaningful goals takes time, effort, and patience. Keep your ultimate purpose in mind and let it be the beacon that guides you through the storms. Third, build a support network. Surround yourself with people who believe in your vision who offer encouragement during tough times and celebrate your successes. This network can provide invaluable perspectives, advice, and motivation when the going gets tough. Let me tell you another story, this time of a young athlete who dreamed of competing in the Olympics. Her journey was fraught with injuries and disappointments. There were times when the physical and emotional toll made her question her dream. But her unwavering determination, coupled with the support of her coach and family, kept her going. Her resilience in the face of adversity and her persistence in pursuing her dream paid off when she finally stood on the Olympic podium, a testament to the power of overcoming obstacles. As we reflect on these stories, let us remember that overcoming obstacles is an integral part of the journey towards living a purposeful life. It is through these challenges that we discover our strength, our resilience, and our true potential. As we move forward, let us approach each obstacle not as a deterrent but as an opportunity to grow, to learn, and to move one step closer to our goals. In the next part of our exploration, we'll delve into strategies for effective time management, ensuring that we make the most of our most valuable asset, time, on our journey to achieving our purpose. In the tapestry of life, how we manage our time is akin to the strokes of a brush on a canvas, defining the clarity and beauty of the picture we wish to create. Time management, especially for those of us striving to live purposefully, becomes not just an act of organizing our days, but a deliberate crafting of life itself. It's about making conscious choices that align with our deepest values and aspirations, ensuring that every hour counts toward painting the masterpiece that is our life. Prioritization stands at the core of effective time management. It's the art of discerning the truly important from the merely urgent, the lasting from the fleeting. Imagine your life as a jar filled first with rocks, then pebbles, and finally sand. The rocks represent your most significant goals and values, the pebbles the secondary tasks, and the sand everything else that fills your time. If you start with the sand, you'll find no room for the rocks, your most critical priorities. Begin with the rocks, and everything else will find its place. This metaphor beautifully illustrates the essence of prioritization. Focus on what truly matters, and the rest will fall into place. Saying no is another powerful strategy in the arsenal of time management. In a world brimming with demands and distractions, the ability to say no is akin to a shield guarding your time and focus against the myriad of less important or unaligned requests. Remember, every time you say yes to something that is not directly contributing to your goals, you're inadvertently saying no to something that might cultivate the courage to decline invitations, requests, and opportunities that do not serve your purpose. It's not about being unkind or selfish. Rather, it's about being intentional with your most limited resource. 
Time. Leveraging productivity techniques can also significantly enhance your ability to live purposefully. Techniques such as time blocking, where you allocate specific blocks of time for different tasks or activities, can transform a chaotic schedule into a structured pathway towards your goals. Similarly, the two-minute rule, if a task takes less than two minutes, do it immediately, helps clear minor tasks that can otherwise clutter your mind and schedule. For daily implementation, start each day with a clear plan. Identify your top three priorities for the day, the rocks, and ensure they align with your broader goals. Tackle these early in the day when your energy and focus are at their peak. Use tools and technology to your advantage, whether it's a simple to-do list or a sophisticated time management app. Regularly review your progress, not just in terms of tasks completed, but also in how aligned your time spent is with your purpose. Let's also remember the importance of rest and rejuvenation. Just as a painter steps back to view the painting afresh, we too must give ourselves the space to relax and reflect. This not only prevents burnout, but also keeps our vision clear and our purpose front and center. As we embrace these strategies for effective time management, we pave the way for a life that's not only productive, but also meaningful and fulfilling. We turn our days into a deliberate journey towards our goals ensuring that when we look back at the canvas of our lives, it reflects a picture that we are proud to have painted. In conclusion, the journey through understanding the value of our time, defining and pursuing our purpose, setting goals, overcoming obstacles, managing our time effectively, and ultimately living each day to its fullest, brings us to a place of deep contentment and fulfillment. It's a journey marked by growth, resilience, and a ceaseless pursuit of what truly matters. Let this be the path we choose to walk each day, with intention and joy, crafting a life that not only reaches for the stars, but appreciates the beauty of the journey itself. As we draw our journey to a close, let's take a moment to reflect on the ground we've covered, the insights we've shared, and the path we've charted towards living each day with purpose. We explored the profound value of our time, the irreplaceable tapestry of moments that define our existence. We delved into the heart of what it means to live with purpose, to align our daily actions with the deeper aspirations that give our lives meaning and direction. We discussed the critical importance of setting meaningful goals, not as mere tasks to be accomplished, but as beacons guiding us toward our fullest potential. We navigated the inevitable challenges and setbacks that test our resolve, finding in them opportunities for growth and resilience. We examined strategies for effective time management, ensuring that each day is not just spent, but invested in pursuits that enrich our lives and the lives of those around us. And finally, we embrace the philosophy of living each day to the fullest, savoring the beauty of the present moment, cultivating gratitude, and choosing actions that reflect our deepest values. Now, the canvas of your life awaits your brush. The time to act is not tomorrow, not someday, but today. The world is full of possibilities, and your purpose is the key that unlocks the door to a life of fulfillment and achievement. Remember, the journey to a purposeful life is not a sprint, but a marathon. It requires patience, persistence, and an unwavering commitment to growth and learning. Let me leave you with a call to action. A rallying cry to propel you forward on your path to living purposefully. Embrace each day as if it were your masterpiece, knowing that the art of living purposefully is not in reaching the destination, but in cherishing the journey. Let your purpose be your compass, guiding your steps, informing your choices, and illuminating the path ahead. Start where you are, use what you have, do what you can, but above all, begin. Let these words be the wind beneath your wings as you soar toward your dreams. Remember, the only limit to what you can achieve is the extent of your determination and the strength of your purpose. So go forth with courage, with heart and with the unwavering belief in your ability to make a difference. The time to live purposefully is now. Let this be the moment you choose to step into your greatness, to live not just by the clock but by the compass of your deepest aspirations. Your purposeful life awaits.